and welcome to the Alpine Valley School podcast. I'm your host, Mark Gallivan. Today, we're beginning a new series called Founding Stories, where I speak to the founders of various self-directed democratic schools around the world and interview them about the journeys that led them to this model of education. On this episode, I interview the founder of East Kent Sudbury School in Kent, England, Kezia Cantwell-Wright. This is episode 44 of our podcast, and you can find show notes for this episode at alpinevalleyschool.com slash podcast slash EP44. The show notes include relevant links, more information about East Kent Sudbury School, and a written transcript for Kezia's interview. With all that out of the way, here's Kezia. My name is Kezia, and I'm one of the key founders of East Kent Sudbury School. We opened in January 2019, so we're now in our third term, and it's really exciting to be finally living it. I think right from the beginning, from from when I realized that I was having my first child, I I threw myself into being a mother and I read everything I could about everything. And and so when it came to thinking about education, I similarly wanted to do do my homework and make sure that I was choosing the right choice. And then I met a friend through a baby group who told me that she was considering home educating her son because she felt he wasn't going to fit into mainstream. And as he was tell- she was telling me about, about that and about unschooling, it just resonated and something inside made me think, yeah, actually, this, this could be something that we want to do too. I guess that kind of nudged us further along the, the, the road of self-directed education. And we found ourselves quite seriously taking, you know, taking self-direct education really seriously. But then when my daughter got to be about six, I started to see a shift where up until then, it felt like not doing school was broadening our horizons. It gave us access to more. And her being with me didn't, all the time didn't seem to be a problem. It was helping her independence. And then suddenly around six, something seemed to shift. And I wasn't really enough anymore. She needed a consistent community of peers. Whilst we had a great social life as home educators, it wasn't a consistent community. You know, you saw different people on different days and you never quite knew who was going to show up to what. And I realized that what we needed was a solid group, a place where she would feel as as at home as she did at home. But she would have a much bigger pool of people to interact with. And where she wasn't reliant on me to make things happen, if she had a vision she could make it happen through that community off her own back and not require me to facilitate everything, which was kind of what happened in home education. So it kind of seemed like we needed a school, but this was the thing that we'd kind of avoided up till now. So it was like, okay. And then I, of course, I read Peter Gray's book and heard about Sudbury Valley School and there was no turning back. It was just like a light bulb went off. Of course, there wasn't one in the United Kingdom. I talked to my friend, um, the same friend, actually, who first introduced the idea of home education to me. We'd kept in touch and we'd always compared notes. And so we'd been comparing notes all the way along. And I said, look, I've, I've, hit, I've found this Sudbury model school and I, I suddenly realized I want to start a democratic school. I think I dithered. I must have sat on the idea for at least six months, kind of going, well, I'd really like to do that, but I'm too busy. And maybe I'm not the right person to do it. And, you know, I don't know if I've got the courage and maybe, you know, maybe we could just move to Paris or maybe we could just move to Massachusetts or (laughs) maybe we could just move to Ireland. You know, none of these options seemed realistic. It kind of seemed like really we we had no other choice. And I said, okay, I, I want this for my kids. I, I can't accept anything less for my kids, but moreover than that, I began to be just really mad that it didn't exist in the UK. And it, it became a bit of a, uh, a passion that I just, I couldn't let go of. So one day I, I thought, okay, right, I'm going to go for it. And I created a Facebook group and I couldn't believe it. I, within, I think within about three months, we had about 300 people join the Facebook group. And I thought, okay, you know, just like Facebook just blew up in front of my face. And I thought, all right, okay. So other people have been thinking this too. Um, And it's been a bit of a roller coaster ever since. Yeah, one of the best things that I read 
after I started the journey was a blog post by um, Fox Kuhain, who was a founding member of Sudbury um, Paris and also of Wicklow. And, and he really spelled out for me the steps. And I wish that I'd read it before I made my big Facebook announcement. And one of the biggest things I, I learned is that no matter how democratic you want to be, somebody, somebody or some group is a vi- has to lay down a vision. And you've got a, f- a choice at the outset. Are you going to be a vision holder? In which case, set out your vision and recruit people to help you with that vision and make it really clear what it is from the beginning? Or do you want to find a group and co-create a vision? And and it's best to think about that before you tell anybody other than maybe your partner or best friend about it. Because what I think I, I found was really early on in the, in the day, I was a little bit woolly um, and said, I've got this idea, but I don't know exactly what it is yet. And then, of course, everyone, it gives license to everyone then to tell you what your idea should be. I get I discovered that there are a lot of a lot of hurt children out there. There are a lot of children that are unhappy in the educational choices they've got. And there are a lot of parents that are really desperate and really angry. And they want something perfect for their children. And it doesn't exist. And when someone comes out and says, dangles this carrot of hope, or maybe, maybe this is the thing to save your child. And then and then they go, oh, actually, it's slightly different to that. Um, they get really, really upset and, and reasonably so, because there should be lots of choices, shouldn't there? What else? What other big, big things I've learned? The team is everything. Um, I think something to expect is that there will be one or two people that do the lion's share of the work. And you'll have maybe six or eight other people that do little things to help you along the way. And you really, really need them. But to expect them, expect everyone to do an exactly equal amount of work is unreasonable because some people will have more time and more energy and more passion to give to it than others. But that doesn't mean that it's not important to the other people. They just, they, they physically can't give what you can give. And it will only breed resentment if you set yourself up to expect that. What's your advice to somebody starting a school? Well, firstly, don't do it if you don't have to do it. If you can move somewhere, if it's for your children, if you can move somewhere, just move somewhere. Just do that. Or if you're really, really passionate about starting a school, see if there's anyone else already on that, already in that process that's already begun because it really is such a gigantic task. And I don't regret it for one second, but I, I definitely wouldn't do it again. I get quite a lot of emails about, would I start a school in Manchester or something? No, no, why would I do that? One is enough. <laughs> so go and find someone else, you know, and especially don't open a school just round the corner from someone else you know you don't it's not about vanity these schools are really small they appeal right now to a small number of people and they need bodies and they need passionate people you know so you have to bear this in mind when 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 you're starting out on this do you really really want to be that person or can you just help someone else out and then if you decide that no there is no other choice then think about your vision, find some good people, and take it slow. Don't rush it. There are days when I, I you know, I just want to well up because I'm just so happy seeing this beautiful community all living together and rubbing along and and seeing these kids be together that wouldn't have been together, friendships formed that wouldn't have happened and yeah, it's, it's really, it's really exciting. Thanks to Kezia for sharing her story and her advice with our community. If you'd like to find out more about East Kent Sudbury School, you can visit the show notes for this episode at alpinevalleyschool.com slash podcast slash EP44, where we will have a whole host of resources, including a written transcript for today's episode. Next episode, we'll be continuing our Founding Stories series 
So stay tuned for that. I'm Mark Gallivan. This is the Alpine Valley School Podcast, and we'll be back again soon with more stories of real learning for real life.